of all people, Joe Scarborough woke up this morning and decided to be a progressive. And not just a progressive, a progressive with some brass knuckles and a billy club. Listen to him school Peter King on Afghanistan and foreign policy. Osama bin Laden is dead. Al-Qaeda in mm -hmm. Afghanistan has been decimated. Uh, George no, Al-Qaeda is right, no, that's not true. Al-Qaeda is right across the border with Pakistan. They, they can be back well, in well, Afghanistan but, but, in a matter but of here, days. But here, here's, the, here's the difference, though, Peter, between now and September 10th, and you certainly right. know this as well as anybody. Right. Al-Qaeda is not geographically centric anywhere now. It's in Yemen. Right. It's in Africa. Absolutely. It is across the globe. We can't send all of our forces there. And David Axelrod, we can't. You know, we can't be the world's 911. Uh, no, that's, Joe, said, that's an exaggeration. Uh, that's the type of exaggerated debate that does not help us. Really, no one wants to be a 911. Peter, that's the fact not is, an exaggerated not going into debate. We have been in Afghanistan since and, 2001. And we've not been there Joe, are people uh, dying in Afghanistan Joe, this week that were five, six, seven years Joe, old when the we war have not started, been, also, Peter. It is not our job to Joe, be the world's policeman it, and it to be there it, it for it the next 20 to, years. It, it is our job to protect the United States of America. And I'm saying if we arbitrarily withdraw from Afghanistan, we leave ourselves open for another attack. Arbitrarily right, I agree. withdraw, we've been, there for, we've been there for over 12 years. How long I, do you want to stay in Afghanistan? I'm saying right now, right now, there are certain parts of the country that are stabilized. I think with a uh, minimum security force working with Afghanistan, we have to remain there for at least the next three or four How? years. So, Another I'm, three I'm saying years. right now, let's, let's play by it, three, four years, because uh, right across that border, Al-Qaeda is there, they're privileged sanctuaries, and if we want to be able to go after them, we have to have bases in Afghanistan to do it. If our troops come out, and I agree with you about Karzai, I have no love but, for but, Karzai but, at but, all. But, but Peter, this that does, not, 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 not to be disrespectful, that doesn't change, though, three or four years. What happens in three or four years? Well, they Joe, wait, let's, let's they're still the situation. there. They're still going to be there Joe, 10 years from now. They're that, still going to be there 20 Joe, years Joe, from now. Joe, Joe. Joe, Joe, stop making good points. I can't, I can't respond because you're making factual statements. Oh, Joe Scarborough. Look, Joe Scarborough's a guy we don't agree with often, right? Let's just say. But every once in a while, he'll come out there and he'll be like, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be progressive today. And he schooled Peter King's ass. So a couple things here. Uh, when it comes to the war in Afghanistan and the war on terror in general, uh, number one, look at the polls. The American people are completely and utterly against it in tremendous numbers. Uh, there's one poll war in Afghanistan, uh, about 68%, 69% say, yeah, let's get out today, like right now. In fact, we should have done it like four years ago, right? Now, we do live in a representative democracy. So our representatives are supposed to do this radical thing known as legislating the will of the majority. But I love how Peter King, like, that's not even a consideration for him. He's like, yeah, I could listen to the American people or I could just do whatever the fuck I want to do and tell them to piss off. You should probably get a, a new career, pick a new line of work if you don't want to listen to the people of the United States of America. That's kind of your job, right? Uh, second thing is, dude, we've been there for over 10 years. What do you think we're going to achieve in the next month, or the next two years, or the next three or four years that we haven't uh, tried to do already and most likely failed at? And I love how at one point he's like, yeah, we'll just play it by ear. We'll stay there in three, four years, and we'll play it by ear. Play it by ear? You're not making dinner plans. You're fighting a fucking war, you idiot. They're so, like, Republicans are so nonchalant about war. Like, yeah, we'll stay there maybe in the 10, 20, 57 years. Who gives a fuck? It's not my kids over there. It's other poor kids. So go ahead, fight for us. We don't, and we don't even know why we're fighting, but go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, which leads to my third point, and uh, Joe Scarborough brought this up and did a great job of it. Al-Qaeda's everywhere. They're, I mean, they're in uh, Yemen and Pakistan and Somalia. They've taken over all of northern Mali to the point where the French are fighting a war there against Al-Qaeda. I mean, you might as well call Northern Mali al qaeda -stan. We are in Afghanistan. You want to know how many Al-Qaeda operatives are there? This isn't me. This isn't even a, a news report from, like, one of the different media outlets. Our own CIA admits there's only between 50 and 100 members of Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. That might be the most underrated fact of all time, an under-discussed fact of all time. 
and we had we had 68,000 troops there. We just drew down a little bit, right? What are you doing 68,000 to fight 50 to 100 guys blowing trillions of dollars in our deficit? What happened, Peter King? I thought you were a deficit hawk. I guess you're not because you just want to keep blowing money for no reason whatsoever. So what do you want to do? And here's where Scarborough pounces on him. He says, dude, if you want to be consistent in your reasoning that, oh, we need to fight Al-Qaeda, then you would say, let's invade Yemen and Somalia and Pakistan and Northern Mali and all of the other countries that have Al-Qaeda in it, which is probably about seven or eight more. And that obviously doesn't make any sense, man. Look, we should just uh, fight the war on terror by sending SEAL Team 6 all over the place and let them do exactly what they did to bin Laden and call it a day. This way we limit all civilian casualties. You shouldn't even do drone strikes because we kill so many civilians. And uh, last point here, and this is the biggest one and where Peter King is horribly incorrect. He says, oh, we need to keep fighting the war on terror because we got to keep us safe. What are you against keeping us safe, Joe Scarborough and all the people against the wars? No, you idiot. Look at the studies, man. Since uh, we began fighting the war on terror, the net number of terrorists in the world has increased. The uh, net number of terrorist attacks has increased. So by using simple, logical deduction, you can conclude if the goal of the war on terror was to limit terrorism or eliminate terrorism and limit terrorist attacks, it has been an abject failure. There's no other possible interpretation. You fought a war to end terror and terrorism got worse. You made it worse. And the reason why you made it worse is because when you were in uh, Iraq, you killed over 100,000 civilians and people who were otherwise moderate and like the United States of America decided, well, I might pick up a rifle and fight them now because my nephew uh, got killed or my uncle got killed or whatever the case is. Same thing is going on in Afghanistan. But this idiot Peter King is like, oh, no, we need to keep fighting to defend the United States of America and we need to protect against uh, uh, terrorism. The way to protect against terrorism is to draw out today, get all of the troops out of there. I'd go further. I'd shut down almost every single uh, military base, the 900 military bases the United States has in 130 countries. That's how you uh, limit terrorism. And you fight it by doing intelligence work, not to steal a phrase from uh, candidate Obama in 2007 and 2008. You shouldn't be using a hatchet uh, when you should use a scalpel.